This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg here. Um, forget where I'm at. I need to drink another one. Hey guys, it's Indie Mayhem Show, the show where we talk with indie, indie wrestlers, people around indie wrestling about wrestling, as you do. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this show, the Indie Mayhem Show, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page. And you can also check out the other feeds, the Sorgatron Media Master feed and the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super feed includes this show, as well as everything else we're doing, either in wrestling or everything podcasting in the Sorgatron Media Network, uh, depending on what you want to uh, pick us up on. Uh, choose your poison and the amount of podcasts you want from one single source. Uh, and also, please uh, hit us line, uh, Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show, or 412-206-WMS0. If you have any feedback on interviews we've had or anything we've announced coming up, uh, you can submit questions for that, or join us on the chat room, live.sorgatronmedia, I'm sorry, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. I forgot what year it is. Um, or Facebook Live, uh, subscribe to that Facebook Live, and you'll get updates, uh, events, or if we have some impromptu stuff we have scheduled, and you can be part of the chat room for these interviews as well. Um, so this week, we are uh, we have with us on the couch in the studio the gavel David Lawless joining us. How you doing, man? Fantastic. Thank you for having me. Uh, so uh, you, you, you'll be the second lawyer on the show. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Who's the first? Uh, Chris LaRusso, of course. Obviously. Uh, a long time. He's been on the, many of our shows multiple times. So uh, we're going to get into things and get into uh, what you're doing in, in the pro wrestling world. Uh, but uh, first of all, we like to do a little bit of icebreaker. Um, so what is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Uh, wow. It was uh, being in my parents basement with one of my friends and turning on monday night raw seeing the one two three kid defeat razor ramon wow that's the first memory that i have of professional wrestling and i was hooked from there well, it was because of, like the little guy beating them up or just like the physicality or it was the sheer excitement of it mm -hmm. and i remember watching it and thinking there's no way this is going to happen and mm -hmm. then it happened and it just it, it just it keeps you coming back it keeps you coming back you just mm -hmm. want to see more so is that it, you know as you started watching like did it take long before it kind of you got the bug and and this is something you wanted to do or is that something that came a lot later i wanted to be a professional wrestler from probably within a couple weeks of first watching it and mm -hmm. uh in fact i remember lying to some of the kids that i was in school with in like seventh grade telling them that over the summer i went to al snow's training academy <laughs> Like they would train a, a 13 year old you kid. You were like Lima, Ohio? Or yes, VH? exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and then uh, I joined uh, the wrestling program at my high school so mm -hmm. that I could learn to, to wrestle or at least to be a good foundation. Before practice, we would always be practicing leg drops or suplexes or whatever moves we would try. I was always bigger. So I had a friend who was like 80 pounds at the time and I could just toss him around. Actually, the same friend that inspired my, my wrestling name. And then uh, from there, I got went to college, got really out of shape. <laughs> and then by when I reached 30, I was in really good shape. And I said, hey, I'm going to do this. And that was two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was listening a little bit. Of, you, of course, you, you were also on uh, Matt Connor's uh, podcast, a, a new podcast, and three episodes. In. I think you're on the third episode, actually. Yes. So I definitely recommend that if you guys want to check out, you know, what, you know, a lot of kind of internal wrestling discussion a good 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 kind of thing there plus yep. you guys play a fun little game at the end of it too yes wrestling with into. death wrestling with death is his podcast um but but you know so you started like a lot later yes uh, as far as wrestling goes um what were your kind of challenges kind of getting into that and and you know was a lot of doubt like getting in that late no doubt um getting in that late i think it was more of uh just questioning what i could achieve in mm -hmm. wrestling at this age uh, my first goal was just to wrestle and learn to wrestle. And then from there it was to, to get on a show. And then from there it was to become a prominent wrestler in the show or with the promotion that I was on. 
now it's to travel and then from there it's you know to hopefully wrestle on national television and hopefully get looks or get opportunities with bigger companies absolutely um but you know getting into it as late as i as i have uh, i definitely don't kid myself that you know i don't offer as much to a promotion as say someone who's 24 25 years old that you know hasn't had the injuries that i've had hasn't had you know, isn't my age is younger and and is a little more raw than mm-hmm. i am there's definitely a, a, a i guess a shelf life question at that point right Yes and no. I mean, I think uh, obviously there's people that are successful later. Look at Christopher Daniels, mm-hmm. right? Perfect example. But uh, and Kurt Angle still is having great matches on the indies, even though he's had what four neck surgeries yeah. and is is in his forties. He's also, I think, in a good way. I mean this. I love Kurt Angle. Certifiably insane when it comes to performance. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I agree. I think a lot of it comes down to, though, um, you have to know your limitations mm-hmm. when you get into wrestling at this age. And I think you have to also um, pace yourself. So, you know, I'm not the type of person that's going to try 450. And if I would, I would probably hurt myself. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to do that. And um, I think a lot of it comes down to training and the people you you wrestle with. Um, People from, you know, my trainer, Brandon Kay, all the way up to Christopher Daniels at Ring of Honor Camp, who I had a chance to work with. You know, and even Steve Austin says this on his podcast. If you don't know how to take a move or you don't feel comfortable taking it, don't take it. You should be skilled enough as a performer to be able to put something in the match that's safe, that tells the same story. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, some guys are hesitant to say to someone, hey, I don't really want to take that or I don't know what I'm doing. But you have to speak up because at the end of the day, it's your body. It's on the line there. Well, especially something like, you know, guys that maybe have a chance to, you know, uh, indies over the years, you know, uh, the local guy that gets the, hey, we're going to put you up against AJ Styles coming into town, right? You know, you don't want to say no to AJ. You don't want to say no to a Christopher Daniels or something like that, I would imagine. Well, you don't, but but I guess knowing uh, the attitude that those guys bring, and especially mm-hmm. Christopher Daniels, they would never want you to agree to take something that you've never taken before either. Mm-hmm. So, um you know, one thing that, that Christopher Daniels said, which was really interesting, was, you know, as a performer, you want to kind of have a skeleton of a match that you can plug any one of any skill level into in case you get you find yourself in a situation where you're booked on a show and you don't get a chance to work with someone that may not be as experienced as you. And you never want to put anything in there that's going to be extremely challenging because it's not going to look that good mm-hmm. and it's going to detract from your performance. So, um, you know, you might be a little hesitant to say that to those individuals, but those are the individuals that would understand more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Okay. I understand why this person doesn't want to do this. Absolutely. So let's talk about your character a little bit. uh, uh, Chachi and I, you know, we, we, we film a lot of promotions. So we, we made the the, the decision at the beginning of the year, like, let's go enjoy some wrestling. And as we've talked about on wrestling ma'am show before recording this, you know, there's a lot of wrestling here in the, in the greater Pittsburgh tri-state area. So we went to PWX amongst other things. Uh, and here comes this guy. He's got a gavel. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, uh, which, which I, I, have, I have a criticism about that. I'll get to a little later. Okay. Uh, and then he's throwing business cards out the next time we see him. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, and then I look behind us cause we're, cause then I look around and I was like, wait a minute, there's like an official law firm of PWX sign behind us. And I wondered if there was synergy going on there. No, at that point, <laughs> no, no synergy there. That that ad's been up there since I started training. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't even know who that person is. To be, I don't even know if that person's still practicing as an attorney. <laughs> they just forgot the banners around, pretty much. So indie wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Well, and you'll notice too that the banner says "discounts for PWX fans." <laughs> now, here's the thing: I don't know what type of law this person's practicing, but rarely do you give discounts. Yeah, how would they know you're a PWX fan? Too? You bring your ticket stub, right? I mean, <laughs> maybe I've never worked in the coupon law industry, so I'm not sure how that would work. Buy one, get one free. Yeah, right. Um, get out of get out of jail free card. Right. <laughs> those, those those are not real. Let me tell you. But you are, like I've said, you're 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 a legitimate lawyer. Yes. Um, I feel like I don't have to say legitimate in front of that. Uh, but but uh, you practice law. You're you're doing this, and and you're in your wrestling as well. Um, hence a very no brainer gimmick, it sounds like. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, so I also do this and I am a professor of law at, uh, Duquesne mm-hmm. University. I teach their trial ad program. So, uh, 
you know, everyone said, find a character that's you turned up to the 10th degree. Mm-hmm. And um, my character is is kind of the antithesis of the person that I am. I don't like to think I'm this uh, arrogant prick that walks around thinking he's better than everyone else. But uh, there's a lot of attorneys that act like that. So that was a good inspiration for the, the, the character the, of the gavel, David Lawless. Mm-hmm. And then, you know... You envision some things that you'd like to say to some of your problem clients, and then you just unleash it on the moron fans. So, so, so you. this is kind of a therapy for you. A little bit. It, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of catharsis associated with going out and being able to cut a promo. Yeah. And you know what's cool is, um, as a heel, right? You get to think of all this like really terrible stuff to say, but you can get away with it because you're a heel, and yeah. people expect that from you. So, you know, the one I like to to really. Uh, it's it's kind of my go-to when I go to a new territory is that, you know, they boo me because they fear greatness and that the greatest achievement these people will have is being able to tell their parole officer or GED instructor that they saw me wrestle. So, you know, that's like, I would never say that to anyone. That's incredibly rude. Yeah. But to say that to like a room full of people and, and, and as a, you know, as a heel, it's fantastic. Absolutely. Is, is you ever, you know, uh, in the courtroom or, 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 you know, meetings or whatever, like you hear somebody say something I'm like that would be a good line for me to use. Uh, there's a there's an attorney that will remain nameless that uh, provides a lot of inspiration for the character of the, <laughs> of the gavel, David Lawless. Imagine the most obtuse person you've ever met in your life and working. Imagine trying to work with them in the context of practicing law. Mm-hmm. And, you know, our goal in practicing law is to try to reach a resolution for our clients in the fastest way possible um, the most economical way, and, mm-hmm. and just basically to make it as burdenless as possible for the people. This person just said, "You know what? F that. I'm doing everything the exact opposite," and it it just it makes me want to rip my hair out. So that's that's kind of the inspiration for the character a little bit. Um, is is this individual and his uh, shenanigans? Absolutely. Uh, I, I I I it was fun uh, listening to you over on Wrestling and Death, um, and uh, and I witnessed I think the very thing that you were talking about how how uh, the Connors Court Cure show like somebody was ripping up the, the the business card and throwing it back at you. Yeah, like, yeah, is the greatest interaction. Well, and and that's the thing is you know if you give the fans something that they can take home with them, mm-hmm. then then they'll remember you. And uh, I think you know that's part of why I like the characters because it's a natural uh, there's a natural flow to being an attorney and throwing out business cards. You know, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen The Verdict with Paul Newman, but that movie opens up. It's it's a famous movie about lawyers, but it opens up with him going to a funeral and passing out his business card. Like, scummy ambulance chasers, that's exactly what they do, right? Mm-hmm. They throw their business cards out, rep- you know, be represented by me. So that's exactly what I thought when I did that. And as an added bonus, the, the kids have something they can rip up or throw back at me or keep if they like my character. Absolutely. Uh, which brings me around talk, talking about your character and the, and the fun things you do with it. I have a criticism. Okay. And I thought about this again at that Connors Cure show. I saw you come out. I don't know if it's the venue, the context, or whatever. You, you had the gavel. Yeah. All right. I feel like the gavel is too small. I I just feel like, and I know that's a real, probably a real size gavel, right? That is a real size gavel. You probably have not been at a show where you've seen me take out the three foot gavel that I have. No. That I wasn't going to suggest one that big, but I, I just feel like it should be accented a little bit more, right? It's like my... I would liken my three-foot gavel to Triple H's sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. So, Okay, okay. Go, I'm, war- I'm warming up to the idea now. That's fine. I, I, absolutely. If you go on YouTube, okay, and you type in uh, David Lawless versus Peyton Graham... There is a there's our full length match from the benefit brawl that was done at Freeport High School. You will see at the end of that match the three foot gavel makes its appearance, and let me tell you that every single time I've brought that gavel out, it has had the exact same reaction, which is pure shock, and people go crazy for it. It it's it's like the sledgehammer, and that's exactly what I envisioned when I when I found this, and I found it at a website called GreatBigStuff.com. Which literally has anything you could imagine, just just giant sizes. I need to. Oh, the, we we have to investigate this site out there. There's, there's got to be some fun stuff we can get out of there. Great stuff there. Yes. Great big stuff. Great big stuff. Dot com. Dot com. So so that that solves the problem because I'm just like you're coming out. You're this big wrestler. 
and he gets his little gavel. Yeah. And and just like like, man, what you know, and, and I like the idea, like you put it in the corner, kind of like boss man's nightstick style, right? Like yeah. the good old days. You got the thing, you can immediately be reached for and and and, and get in there. Yeah. But I'm I, you're you're way ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's funny too because so I bought this this big honking gavel, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't want to bring it out the first match that I had. So I saved it for the second match. And my second match ever was against G Raver, who was just oh, he was awesome to work with. Awesome to work with, especially for my second match, which I was terrified about, but he, he made it great. So we did this spot in the match where he's hung up on the top rope and I take the big gavel and I swing it at him and I miss and I do the whole rock thing where you get hit in the head with the gavel. Mm-hmm. So probably about four months later, I got asked to work a kid's birthday party. <laughs> And I, we wanted to do this same spot, and uh, I swing this gavel, and I snap the head of this giant gavel off. Almost hit a kid in the audience with it. Yeah, this this is the match. If you go, yep, you yeah, see yeah, it. You, you had just, <laughs> you just there it held, is. held it out over your head at this thing. There it is. And it is absolutely frightening. It looks like, I if. Yo, know, out of context, it looks like a mallet that Doink the Clown should have pulled out. Exactly. <laughs> Which is... Exactly, but it's a gavel. <laughs> it was a gavel. It's absolutely a gavel. I, and it didn't work. I, you, you still lost the match. <laughs> I think it was um, it was, it was uh, Ty Cross of the System Elite fame who told me after one of the shows when I had brought the big gavel out, he said, you know, that thing is absolutely ridiculous and it looks so hokey, but you actually make it work. Mm-hmm. I thought, well, that's a great compliment. I appreciate that. So... Yeah, I mean your your criticism is one that I'm sure other people have shared, but you gotta you never know. Will he bring out the big gavel this show? You just never know. So that's why I have it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. A little bit of mystery. If I ever get pulled over <laughs> and people search the trunk of my car, <laughs> all right, here's what you're gonna find in the back of the trunk of my car: a plastic torso, right, for displaying merchandise. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's right. A fold up merch table. Mm-hmm. A three-foot gavel that's intact, the head of a three-foot gavel, and the shaft of a gavel that's broken, and a Rivers Casino pop-up party table. So, I don't know what people are going to think about that if they see that, but uh, I'm sure I'll have to talk my way out of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Oh, and my uh, merchandise too. Actually. And your merchandise, and my of merchandise course. Like, look, I'm a, I'm a wrestler. Would you like a T-shirt? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can, uh, is that a bribe at that point? Uh, I don't know if if the the, the t-shirt doesn't have any value. So there, there you go, there you go. Right, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> from that. Um, so so uh, you know, you've been uh, doing this for a while. Uh, what what's kind of the most uh, uh surprising thing you've run into, like reactions from fans or anything like that, uh, uh in your time wrestling? Um, the the probably the coolest thing that fans have uh, have catered to is this uh, pe- calling people morons. Mm-hmm. So I end all my promos by saying you're welcome, morons, mm-hmm. because obviously lawyers are the smartest people in the world. So no one could ever match my intelligence. And um, the fans that that like my character have started to call themselves morons. We are morons, and embracing it as a term of endearment. So that's been really interesting. And what really made it interesting to me was um, uh, Mr. Kennedy was on the Ross Report recently. And uh, I can say the word a-hole right on here. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. we have fucking our, our title. so just, Perfect, yeah. perfect. So he talked about how after he won the money in the bank at WrestleMania 23, I think it was, mm-hmm. they WWE told him, hey, we want you to cut a promo and we want you to come up with a catchphrase just like Austin did with Austin 316. And he had this idea to say something about how he was an asshole, and he wanted asshole to become a term of endearment, so people said, we are assholes. Mm -hmm. They said, no way, you can't do that. He did it in TNA, though, and it got over Mm -hmm. with people calling themselves assholes, which is the same thing that happened with the morons. So that was really something that I thought was cool and uh, and unique that's happened. Um, Interesting uh, thing that's happened, uh, I had a, um, I think he was a Vietnam vet, uh, chase me down and uh, threaten to fight me in State Street on State Street in Erie. Wait, wait, on State Street? Yeah. So I got a chance to wrestle at the Erie Ribbon Wing Festival last summer. Okay. 
And uh, if you've ever been to Erie, right on State Street in the middle, they have the uh, ring set up. It's through PWR Wrestling up in Erie. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pro Wrestling Rampage. We've we've talked about them on the show in the past. Yeah, fantastic promotion. Mm -hmm. Um, Great individuals. Actually, uh, John McChesney was the Mm -hmm. person who uh, got me in there. So we're getting dressed at a bar in State Street, and then that's where we're entering on the street, and we're walking down the ring. And it's like a half a block, a full block. So I get in the ring and uh, I cut my promo, calling the people morons and you know telling them that they're going to tell their parole officer they saw me wrestle. And this guy starts screaming at me and says, "Hey, lawless, you asshole! I'm a vet. You don't talk to me like that." And I just look at him and nonchalantly say, "Old man, I'll put you in jail right now." <laughs> and this guy gets fucking pissed. So I'm uh, I uh, I won the match by a low blow and I'm leaving to go back and this guy with his cane is like walking like like fast walking towards me like get back in the ring you asshole I'll kick your ass so like the security guard just is just like keep walking dude but I mean that was the the first and only person I've had that's threatened to actually fight me <laughs> in professional wrestling which is a, a mark of accomplishment I've always said if someone killed me because of my character, I would consider it like I've arrived, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, well, on that note, uh, uh, you know, tell me, what are you what are you watching these days? What's kind of catching your attention or maybe uh, some inspiration from or stuff to look out for that you're seeing out there? So I watch a lot of wrestling. Um, I guess, obviously, WWE is the has the most content out there. Um, I love everything in NXT. I think... I like their shows. Um, you know, I think they have a little bit of an advantage when they do the live event specials because everyone's so amped up to see wrestling over that live event weekend, and they have the first crack at it, really. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think that their timing on their shows is perfect. Like, two hours is, in my opinion, the perfect time for a wrestling show because it's just enough time to keep everyone's attention for every match where people aren't on their phones, where they're not distracted by going to get something to eat. And I really think that WWE should try to do that with its bigger shows or split it up. Um, a An indie promotion that I really watch a ton is PWG. Um, and I love it for just the cool moves and mm-hmm. all the, the environment of PWG. Like, if I could wrestle at PWG just once, I, I would retire a happy wrestler because I think it'd be so cool to get out there. Um, I really like what culture, pro wrestling. I like what they're doing from... Uh, you know, a storyline standpoint, a match standpoint, but from a marketing standpoint too, they are killing it over there. And I think they used YouTube as a platform to basically launch their promotion. And now they're doing multi-shoot iPay-per-view broadcasts. They have Jim Ross and Jim Cornette doing commentary. Wow. Um, Limitless up in, I think they're up in Connecticut. The guy who owns Limitless is like 20 years old. He's killing it too. They're bringing in some huge indie names. Um, And they're wrestling in like a, it looks to be like an Elks Lodge. Um, But they have a really good presence on YouTube as well. So the cool thing about being a lawyer is I sit at a computer all day. And unless I'm actively like, you know, typing something up or talking to people on the phone, I get a chance to watch wrestling. So I'm on YouTube a lot watching free matches. um, And I'm a huge Cody Rhodes fan. So I think I've watched every match that he's done on the indies. Um, And he's been down to the PWX in uh, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, where I think he recently wrestled John Schuyler, who was in the finals of the Ring of Honor. Yeah. Uh, uh, I know I've seen I've seen John at RWA a couple of times. Yeah. yeah, top prospect tournament. Yeah. Um, some other promotions. I mean, CZW. I like. I don't like their deathmatch stuff, but I do like you know their traditional shows. Um, Beyond Wrestling obviously has some great stuff as well. Evolve uh, when I can you know when they put the free matches up. Anything that Chris Hero was doing on the indies for the last two years, I've really you know taken to, and I think he's just fantastic. Um, there's so so many so much great wrestling out there, and if you get on YouTube and just even look up you know just free match, you'll you'll find a lot of great promotions. AAW has some great stuff. Uh, I started recently getting into AIW in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little bit of an acquired taste in my opinion, but still would be a cool place to work as well. I know there's some people from Pittsburgh that have gotten they, opportunities and there. And they do. And we've, we've, we've had John on the show a couple of times. And we, somebody I know we look at is like, they are really good about creating moments and stuff that people will gravitate to, to on, on YouTube and social media. Yeah. Feels, you know? yeah. Um, and it's been, do you listen to our podcast? 
Uh, no, I haven't. The card's subject to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely worthwhile uh, as a promoter or or just people into wrestling because it, it's really interesting to see their like. They book stuff just because, like, it wouldn't be cool if we saw this. Yeah. Like, like something like Dan Severn or somebody that were like, I just want to hear Dan Severn's entrance music in our arena. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for a show. Well, I think it, a lot of people are doing that. Yeah. You know, like, uh, you know, Joey Janela had Joey Janela spring break down right. uh, Which WrestleMania is, weekend. Is, I heard probably more about Joey Janela's spring break than I did WrestleMania. Yeah. On WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. Like it was, you were still seeing gifts like throughout the week afterwards. It was, it was incredible. And what was the main event of that? I don't even know. Joey Janela versus Marty Jannetty. Oh my God. That is, <laughs> to me, that is the, that's the epitome of what Joey Janela would do on spring break. Well, it, it's this <clears> interesting <throat> point where, where, you know, we talk about, you know, one of the cruxes of the show is like, hey, if you're into this as a wrestler, as somebody into indie wrestling, you have to be, you know, we, we talk about like Ron, everything. You wonder if people even like wrestling they are watching and talking about it online. Right. Yeah. And you're like, you know, the people that love the wrestling most should be the people like in your position. Right. Yeah. Um, and and I think when you go see shows like that, shows like AIW, it's it's, you know, <laughs> The fans get to fantasy book and have that opportunity to like, man, it'd be really cool to wrestle Marty Jannetty because holy crap, it's Marty Jannetty, right? Yep. Uh, whether ironically for fun, tongue in cheek, just we'd love to see that. Yeah. You know, and 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 a lot of us as fans would love to see that as well, and it, because we're on the same page as the guys in the ring getting a chance to do it. Yeah, and I think you know when you see wrestlers having fun like that, it's hard not to enjoy it, mm-hmm. and that's why. PWG, in my opinion, is so much fun to watch because the wrestlers are having fun. The fans mm-hmm. are having fun. It's just, it's a really cool environment. And it's one that just seems so accepting. Um, you know, I think uh, you look at some of the talents on the indies and, and, and why they're so successful. Chris Hero loves what he's doing. You can tell he really, you know, found his character and the person that he is. And his matches have just been fantastic for the last two years. Cody Rhodes. I always loved Cody Rhodes when he was in uh, WWE, but now mm-hmm. that he's on the indies, man, he's having a great time with his matches too. Um, you look at someone like, you know, he's not on the indies necessarily, but Christopher Daniels, right? Great, great talent. Um, and he is just working fantastic right now also. So to watch him and to be able to see him having fun when he's wrestling too, um, it's great. And and there is so much good wrestling out there now that I feel like most fans haven't even discovered yet. Uh, but when they do, man, you can really sink your teeth into it. And, uh, you know, one match that I would recommend everyone watch if they get a chance is Christopher Daniels versus Adam Cole from Ring of Honor, which was in Las Vegas when Adam Cole lost the title to Christopher Daniels. That match was just fantastic from a storytelling standpoint because you had the young talent versus the old talent. And just the way they opened that match was 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 perfection, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And we saw the lead up to that match here in Pittsburgh and, and, you know, with, with Kaz turning on him and everything. And it was like really kind of all against one on that, on top of all of that. Um, you know, having had a chance to watch the match, but can't wait to, um, all right. Finally, what, uh, what's the best and worst thing about, uh, indie wrestling? The best thing about indie wrestling is, uh, getting the opportunity to meet the fans. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, I mean, to have young kids come up to you and ask for your autograph, um, to uh, just to be able to interact with the fans. Let me let me take that back. Meeting the fans is great um, to interact with the fans. And, and by that, I mean, I think indie wrestling is is just the coolest thing ever. And I, I really wish that everyone on the whole saw it like that. And that's why I've made a concerted effort to try to get out and expose people to indie wrestling that might not. So, you know, people ask me, do you tell people in your line of work that you're a professional wrestler? Absolutely. My students that I teach at Duquesne come out to my shows. I auction off tickets to the shows for Public Interest Law Society at Duquesne so that, you know, students can bid and come to the shows. Um, I've worked on coordinating charity shows for people. Actually, one of my former clients actually helped to coordinate a charity show. So what I tell people all the time is, you know, WWE is the major leagues of professional wrestling, okay? You will not find a better production Mm -hmm. in a live event or on a television show than WWE, okay? But you're also going to pay for it. If you're a family of four and you want to go down and see them at the arena, you're going to spend upwards of $100. 
But for forty dollars, you and your family can come out, can get you know concession food, can get to a show that might have one hundred to five hundred people, and maybe those wrestlers are interacting with those kids. So it's not like you know you go down to the arena and maybe AJ Styles sees your sign. It's hey, I went down and I got a business card thrown at me by a wrestler, okay? Or you know I got to see someone like Sean Phoenix breathe fire and I could feel the heat coming off of it. So it's it. When you're young, right, and you like wrestling, you just want to see wrestling. Would it be cool when I was younger to see The Rock? Sure. But if someone would have taken me to an indie show, I'd have been like, shit, this is awesome too. Like, this is professional wrestling. So the accessibility for the fans is what I love about indie wrestling. My least favorite part about indie wrestling is dealing with some of the people behind the scenes <laughs> in indie wrestling. Um, it's... Uh, you know, it can be challenging um, because it's a business that is run on pretty much a shoestring budget. And, you know, uh, everyone in the Indies thinks that they're the best at what they do. Everyone thinks that they have the best ideas. So, you know, when you're playing in someone's sandbox, you got to realize I have to do what they want me to do. Mm -hmm. um, so that's challenging because sometimes you might not agree with certain things that people are doing behind the scenes. But then again, it's really not your place to, uh, you know, change it because you're not the one that's putting up the money. If you don't like it, you can go elsewhere. And, and that's what people will do. And I don't blame people for that. Um, that's challenging. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the things that's, it's not my least favorite, but it's something that all, I think, good independent wrestlers understand. This is a 24-7 job. And you are always thinking about it. It consumes your life. I love it. I'm passionate about it. I wouldn't be here way past my bedtime if I wasn't. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it can be exhausting at times, too, because you always have to be on. You're always thinking of new things. So that is one of the things that uh, can be a little bit um, exhausting. But, man, it's to, to work a show and to have people tell you they enjoyed your match, they like your character, or they hate your character, there's nothing better. Awesome. Well, let people know where they can find uh, more about you. Absolutely. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Gavel Lawless. That's G-A-V-E-L-L-A-W-L-E-S-S, -S, as it's on the screen. On Instagram, which is my favorite form of social media, at Gavel David Lawless. And Facebook.com slash Gavel David Lawless. My email address is Gavel David Lawless at gmail.com for any booking inquiries or if anyone wants to just uh, ask any questions of me. Um, you know, I, I never want to say that I won't talk to any of the individuals that come to the shows. I've made some great friends through coming to the shows as well. Uh, I have T-shirts that you know are for sale. I'll have. Uh, you should really follow me on Instagram because I'll have caption this contests where you can actually win free T-shirts from captioning uh, photos. So the first one um, we just did a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to be putting one up in the next couple weeks as well. Um, you know, if you're looking. To, if anyone out there is you know knows any local promotions and you're looking to bring in a unique character, uh, I'm probably one of the only people that's doing the attorney character the way that I'm doing it uh, in wrestling, and it's a unique experience for the fans. So give it a shot. I'm willing to travel and uh, you know take a loss if I have to just to get to a new market, um, but I'd love to come and bring the gavel David Lawless to anywhere they'll have me. In varying sizes of gavels. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, the big gavel might be challenging to get on an airplane, but gosh oh. darn it, I'm going to make it work. Eh, just throw it, in, throw it in checked luggage. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's, I think it's like 30 pounds, so I'd have to make sure. The border might be hard. Uh, yeah. The border might be a little hard. Well, so. Once the wall goes up, I won't need to worry about that. That is so. true. Well, you just order it at, at it was a big stuff. Greatbigstuff.com great, great and have it shipped to the foreign Ship country. it forward. And then you just have to, like, you know, you have a Canadian gavel for when you're up there. You have a Mexican gavel for when you're down there. Just leave it with somebody. Yep. You know, you need a, a, a gavel a gavel sitter. Yes, absolutely. And then can I do some shout-outs before? Yeah, go we, for it. So I just want to shout-out to, uh, first of all, my trainers, Brandon Kay, Crusher Hansen, Chris LaRusso, who did help train me. And we went to law school together. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um Chris LaRusso and, oh gosh, I don't want to, oh, Dean Radford. I don't want to leave anyone out. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the people that I trained with, I had a great training class. It was me, Lee Moriarty, Sean Phoenix, Duke Davis. We all came in together, which was awesome because um, we were just really hungry and got after it. 
Uh, shout out to Lewis the Nerd. Shout out to Andrew Palace. Shout out to Chris LaRusso again as a wrestler. Shout out to Jack Pollock and all of Team Storm with Jackson RC, Marcus Mann, Matt Connard, uh, System Elite, Peyton Graham, um, Christian Black, and uh, don't want to forget Locked and Loaded, Duke Davis, Gannon Jones Jr., the hottest tag team in professional wrestling. <laughs> well, yeah, they're going to blow up huge. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. If you guys want to check out more discussions like this, please subscribe to us. Indie Wrestling, or I'm sorry, Indie Mayhem Show um, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Check out a lot of great indie wrestling. Support a lot of these guys that you just mentioned over at IndieWrestling.us or uh, whatever promotions that, that we t- discuss through the show. It doesn't have to be ones we worked with, just as long as you're supporting indie wrestling out there. And of course, follow everything at Wrestling Mayhem Show, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter and good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com is the email. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to our guest, uh, David Lawless. Go, go support him and support indie wrestling. We'll see you next time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.